Hi and welcome to chapter 20. Today we're going to look at insurances and I finally found a chair um, so I can sit down not have to stand in front of the board the whole time. Um, but we're going to look at life, fire, and auto insurance and all of these are really important to protecting the assets that you accumulate or develop. So I guess you could say there's three things, three main financial principles. You want to actually save more than you spend, so you can accrue interest or you can accrue assets. Then you want to continue to develop and grow those assets. And then you want to make sure you protect them um, because there's things that happen and they're going to happen. It's life. And so we're going to look at first life insurance and the main difference between term and permanent um, and why do you even need life insurance. And so, and how do you even though I don't really appreciate how the book covers it because it, it focuses more on what your premium would be, um, but you can get those from any insurance agent. You know, if you go to Travelers or State Farm or Northwestern Mutual, all of those are going to provide um, quotes for you. And so I think it, it should have addressed actually how much should you have, what's your coverage, and what should it be. And, and we'll talk about that. But what are the two types? There's temporary or term or there's permanent. Tempor temporary is for a set amount of time. Normally it's for younger um, people or, or workers in the sense of a young couple or a young couple with kids would get term because it's going to be cheaper. Um, but once that time period is done, there's no more coverage. And so you might have a term 5, a term 10. Normally they're term 20s uh, is what you'll see. You'll actually even see uh, most term 20s will give you a, a fixed price for that 20 years. This is what you can pay and have X amount of coverage. Um, they actually do have term 80, which uh, I actually have term 80, and that covers me till I'm age 80. Uh, but my rates will increase as I get older and have a higher likelihood of passing away. So that's kind of what term is, is, is it's a set amount of insurance, kind of like your car insurance. You buy it and it stops in the six months or in the year. So same thing, you buy it and if you make your payments, you'll have it for a set amount of time. Whereas permanent is until you die. Um, so it's called whole life or permanent life insurance. They call it in the book straight. Uh, it's going to be a lot more expensive, but you actually can develop a cash value with yours as well as um, having that solid foundation that no matter what your family will be taken care of because you have this set amount for sure whenever you die. If, even if you're 105 or whatnot, it doesn't matter. So um, how they want you to calculate premiums in the book is you take your coverage, your amount of your coverage divided by a thousand and then multiply that by the table they have in the book. I think he wants you to carry your book wherever you go. Um, because he's very table heavy, uh, unfortunately, um, but it's one way to go. Uh, and so, we'll actually, before we get there, what is the rule of thumb of how much do you actually need? What is, what's the cover amount that you should have, the amount of coverage? Um, well, the, the rule of thumb is you have your, you want to make sure you cover your debts. So, in the last chapter, uh, chapter 15, we just purchased a home. So now I have a $200,000 or $250,000 mortgage that I want to take care of. So let's say $200,000. And then I want to have at least 10 to 12 times my annual salary. So if I make $50,000 times that by 10, that's $500,000 plus my $200,000 to cover my debt. Say I have student loans that aren't government loans, but they're personal loans. And say I have about auto loan, so the rest of my adds up to about seven hundred or about fifty thousand. So I have two hundred fifty thousand in debt, five hundred thousand in income. So I'll need about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in life insurance. Now term, if you're healthy, you can get that for less than fifty dollars a month. You know, um, whole I believe it's a, a different ball game. So I don't know what it is there. So but let's calculate what our premiums would be in the book. So I'm going to look at 474, uh, the extra practice problem. Number one, it says that on 474, basically we want $70,000 uh, in life insurance. I'm age 37, and it will be term five. 
So a five year short coverage term. So I'm going to turn to table uh, 20.1. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to divide, as we said, by a thousand. So um, I divide by a thousand my amount of coverage, and I'm going to multiply it by the table. So I'm going to look it up age 37 over 2.67. So 2.67 times 70. So my annual premium is going to be basically, um, let me look at the math I already did. $187.90, and I'll double check that real quick. So 70 times 2.67 equals 186.90. That's what I had previous. $186.90. So basically, you could divide that by 12 to get your monthly payments. It'd be about $15 a month for $70,000 in coverage, is what he's saying. So let's look at number two. It says. Uh, on 474, that I'm 30 years old, $95,000. What happens if I decide, if I'm Ginny, who purchased a $95,000 straight life policy or whole life, calculate her annual premium. If for five years she wants to surrender her policy, what options and what amounts are available to her? So well, let's figure that out. First, uh, we're going to calculate as we did before. Divide by 1,000. So 95 times. We're going to look at straight life at age 30. 8.85. So 95 times 8.85. 95 times 8.85 is. $840. Okay? So we want to figure out what is the cash value of that. So, what we do is we then turn to our 20.2 and we see that the cash value is, if we go, how many years of policy enforced? Five years. So we have 29 times our 95. So 95 times 29 equals 2,075. 2,755 dollars. So our cash value is by taking 95 times uh, table 20.2, the cash value sum of 20. So the amount of insurance paid up right here is going to be 86 times 95. And then the amount of term we'd have is 9 years, 91 days. So I think these are kind of silly, uh, figuring out the premiums, but it is something that we can learn, so might as well, if we're able to learn, let's keep on doing it. So this is equal to $8,170. So if I stopped, she wouldn't have to pay any more, but she's got coverage of $8,170. So if she passed away, that's how much her beneficiaries would actually receive. So let's go on to the second learning unit, which is on the fire insurance. Uh, basically, your, your basic fire insurance is going to cover your fire or lightning damage. Um, you actually need to get extended coverage as well, which would cover your smoke or the chemicals and water. So say you have a fire, the fire department comes in and just blowing water, water all over. Well, you're, you're going to have smoke damage, so all your clothes will smell, and then your, your carpets will get wet, the insulation will get wet. So this is going to cover all the other damages from that fire or from them trying to put that fire out. Again, they teach us how to calculate the premiums, uh, which is our insured value divided by 100, then times the rates that we're going to look up in their chart. And then um, basically your short rate premium, if you cancel it early, it's your annual rate premium times your short rate, and then your annual premium minus your short rate 
premium to get your refund. So, and we're also going to use the insurance carried divided by the amount that you actually should. So, a lot of people don't carry the amount of insurance that they actually should, and then times that by the loss. So, we'll see this through um, again the practice problems 2A on page. 477, so I'll turn to page 477, and it says, uh, calculate the total fire, fire insurance premium of a warehouse that has an area rating of a 3 with a classification of A, the value of the warehouse is 80,000, and the content is 20,000. So I'm going to look at table 20.3, and I see an area rating of 3, Class A, my building is going to be times by 4 or 0.41, and my contents are going to be times by 0.5. So remember, so content is by 0.5. So remember, I divide by 100, so I get 800 for the building, 200 for the content. I look up at my table 20.3, and I get. Um, 0.41 for the building and 0.5 for the content. So it's going to be $100 for the content, and I multiply that. Uh, 3, 4, uh, 24, I believe. Let me double check that. 28. So that's $428 is going to be the premium for number one. So I added, you have to add both those together. So then we look at it and says, now, if we end this at month eight, what are the costs of the premium and what is the refund? So if we want to go back and look at um, 20.4, we see at month eight, it's 74%. So what we have to do is times... 428 times 0.74 equals $316.72. Well, then what is our refund? Well, we actually we paid 428. We got to subtract that and we get a little $111.28 is what the refund will be. The last question of fire insurance is Jones insures a building for $140,000 with an 80% co-insurance clause. The replacement value is $250,000. Assume the loss of $50,000 from the fire. What will the insurance pay? If the loss is $170,000 the co-insurance was met, what will the insurance company pay? So let's look and see. Um, basically, we have our 140000 which we paid for, over, because that's what our insurance carried, amount it should be carried, while well, 80% of two fifty is 200000 So that can reduce down, actually all the way to 7 tenths or 0.7 and it says a, a loss of 50,000 so 0.7 times 50,000 is equal to 35,000 is what they will cover so you're out $15,000 there because you didn't pay your full insurance now if the loss of 170,000 and the co-insurance was met what will the insurance company pay? Well, if the co-insurance already is met they're not going to pay anything more. So if it's a larger loss, you're out of luck. So that's going to be foot the bell by you. Um, so that's a little bit on fire insurance. Let's get into auto insurance, and that's the last one of this chapter. Auto insurance, again, they have to calculate um, things that I really don't think you need to, to know uh, or have memorized, but it's at least a good exercise to know how your rates are what they are. So they go in and they explain, okay, we need to, it's mandated that we have to have liability insurance, which covers your bodily damage if you injure someone else, if there's passengers in that car besides the driver, 
And then property damage. So if you hit something, you have insurance to cover the property damage. Now what they have optional in the U.S. is also collision and comprehensive. So comprehensive would be theft or someone breaks in and steals something. Whereas collision is if, if you hit something while driving, um, that covers that as well. So let's work through uh, practice problem 482. And we have to understand that there's a lot of factors that go into determining our insurance. Not just for auto, but as well as fire, um, and as well as life insurance. Because they want to make sure that uh, you are a safe driver, or if you are a safe building, or a human being that's not going to take a lot of risks and actually incur death before you should die. So here we're going to look at uh, 482. And it says, calculate the annual auto premium for Mel Jones, who lives in Territory 5. He's a class 17. The car's age is 5. Uh, the symbol is 6, which means the type of car it is. And um, he wants to add, on top of that, bodily injury, $100,000 for uh, one, 300000 for the car, the property of 10000 and then collision and uh, comprehensive of a $200 deductible. So he also wants to add towing. So we have to look at all of our tables. And, and to make it simple, I just put table 20.5 on these two, 20.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, so we know where to look. So when I first look up uh, my liability in my body on uh, 20.5, it says that uh, the class 17 is 98 and then property is 160. So we've got 98 and 160 here. When I look up the body of, on table point 0.6, and I have 100 and 300, I see it's 146. And then it says property of 10, so it's 160, uh, 164. And if you look, $40,000 more only costs $4 more. That's pretty interesting. Um, so sometimes it's worth paying the $4 to get $40,000 extra. So now let's go to collision and comprehensive and table 20.8 and 20.9. So we have collision, um, and it says symbol 6, age 5, so we're at 154. But then we see that we have to actually add $20 because we're at $200 deductible. So 174, because I have 154 plus my 20. Uh, my comprehensive, I look and I see it's a symbol 6, age 5, so 67. But I have to add $4 because of my deductible, so 71. And then my towing is $4. So when I add this all together, I actually get $817 is what my premium is going to be. And so thus I can figure out how much it's going to be monthly. So about $68 a month. So not bad for, for that kind of car insurance. Now if you have any questions about insurances, feel free to give me an email. Uh, thanks. Take care.